So here we are. Uh, we just finished we, Shane. We just finished watching Shane, which is a man movie. This is Chris and Lyle's man movie. We started this because, uh, well, we wanted to watch movies and we wanted to watch manly movies because Lyle here only watches cartoons. Yeah, and, but we're uh, men. But we're men? We're men. We want to watch Not all children. the movies that men over the years in this great nation have watched. Yeah, like Ratatouille. Like Ratatouille. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, <laughs> not Ratatouille. Movies like Shane. 1953's Shane. Shane, yeah. Uh, this, uh, this is from an era when westerns were really big. And the baby boomers grew up. The baby boomer men grew up watching these westerns. And it shaped the American mythic of the west. Stranger comes into town. He's got a murky past. We don't know what's up with him. He clearly knows how to handle a gun. He knows how to take his shirt off and remove a tree stump, a yeah. stubborn tree stump. Him and another guy with their shirts off getting yeah. sweaty, pushing that yeah. stump. It's almost symbolic. Yeah, very manly. Yeah, and very uh, masculine. So Shane, I, I feel like it, being that it was from 1953, uh, yeah, the boomers were kids. It sort of shaped how they uh, looked at masculinity. I made some notes here. Uh, there's a pro-gun message. In the I movie. like that. I like that pro-gun. Shane tells uh, Mrs. Starr, "A gun's only as good or bad as the man holds it." Remember that. Remember that. Uh, that's. I think that's true. I think that's true too. There's a little bit of a weird thing there, kind of a love triangle almost. It did look like the, Shane either wanted to fuck the kid or the, the wife. At that, that's I what I mean. It was a triangle. He wanted them both. He couldn't make up his mind. In the end, he just rode out of town. Yeah, that was the triangle. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I think it's kind of a pro-immigration message. Really? I think so, yeah. Because the conflict in the movie, and I kind of, like I mentioned earlier uh, while we were watching the movie, that I kind of related to the bad guy here. He wasn't just a total evil guy he had actually a pretty good case he showed up first cleared the land got rid of the indians. got rid of those pesky native indians yeah yeah that wasn't pro-immigration no but i mean that was kind of Starrett's point you weren't the first ones here you know maybe but... it is pro-immigration though because that's anti-nativist you know what i mean yeah yeah i don't know i mean it, it's sort of uh they didn't really get into the whole native thing i imagine star did some he wrote, he did the natives dirty. That's yeah. my, that's my prediction. Well, I don't think he, yeah. But he did get shot in the <laughs> shoulder by an arrowhead. Not cool. That's true. So they had it coming when they slaughtered them, you know, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. They were asking for it. They were. But you know, it's, it's pretty classic morality. You know, the guy comes into town, he, he does what's right. He realizes he doesn't belong in this world. Shane's a gunfighter. And, uh. The days of the Wild West are over. The days in which gunfighters and guys who slaughtered Indians. It is, was that a thing? I think that was the thing, yeah. Oh, I didn't pick up on it that. It was about, uh, you know, the, in the early days of the West, wild guys had to come in and do evil things, wipe out the Indians and to make the land safe for non-violent Europe, white Europeans. Europeans. Yeah, good people. Yeah, the yeah. salt of the earth. Yeah. Uh, but their time is over. Yeah, but that, and they, they referenced in the movie that, oh, the nearest uh, sheriff or whatever, you know, that's three days from here or whatever you said, right? Yeah. Laws so there's three days still right this, they're trying to bring stability to this region, but there's still this remnant of the, the you know, the Wild West, Yeah. right? And now, at the end of the movie, tell your mom there's no more guns in the valley. She got it. She had it her way in the end. No more bad people with guns, because the guns not the problem. There's guns. Hmm. It's what's his name? Fucking the villain. Yeah. So I guess in that in this little part of the valley, uh, the bad guy wasn't going to be negotiated with. So I think in a way it is pro conflict in guns. Like sometimes. You're gonna have to fucking get your hands dirty. You're gonna mm -hmm. have to murder a guy with a gun. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. If you want to bring stability to the region, mm -hmm. 
But anyway, it's a good. It's it's a it's a well known movie. I think it's like uh, I believe it's on the AFI 100 best films. I'm not exactly sure where it ranks. Probably won some Academy Awards in the day. Uh, I think it's a really good example of that era western. I like the big Technicolor landscapes. Yeah. And it, the ending really is good. It really pulls together very nicely. But I will say, they freaking milk every little emotion. It's just like, holy yeah. lord, get on with it. I get that you want to build suspense. You want to, mm-hmm. and sometimes that's appropriate. Sometimes that's right. But they just do it constantly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's you can definitely tell the pacing back then is different than now. It like is. we were talking about Shane's ride to the final showdown, like. I feel like we literally, in real time, were yeah. riding alongside him through every crossing of the river and every little hill. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't know. It's it's not bad. I mean, that's sort of subjective. Like we knew what's coming up, and maybe by it's today's not standards, but should do movies have to be efficient? They don't have to be. They clearly don't have to be, but they don't have to be good either. You know what I mean? I yeah. think there's right and wrong. For me, I think they. I think back then. They did things, they were still grounded in reality. So it's like in a realistic conversation, you'd be saying stuff like what they say uh, in in the movie. But in the movie, they're like reiterating points. They'll talk over the same. Like when he was pleading with his wife, when Jim was pleading with his wife to leave to go into town to shoot uh, Wallace, um, that took like freaking 10 minutes. They were having the same conversation over and over again. And that probably is how it would go in real life, but it's just like, it's not representative. And to me, like movies got a lot better at being representative of isolated moments and yeah, but moving through them quickly. So the the showdown at the end, it it was a lot quicker than that argument. Uh, but maybe that's a good thing. Like maybe the fact that the argument was redundant and went on and on, it builds tension. And then when you get to that final showdown, it means more. Like, you've got a little bit more invested in that moment. Yeah, maybe. But I think as far as, like, westerns go, like classic westerns, this is a perfect, uh, this is about as good yeah, as it Yeah, it's gets. a fun one, yeah. That kid is really annoying. The kid's obnoxious. He's I think so even annoying. back in the 50s, people you hated that so? kid. Yeah, he's a, he's a little... He's a uh, bad angry. actor, and he just, like, says, like, uh, he's just annoying. Yeah. And I gotta say... I, who, what's Shane? What's his name? Alan know. Ladd. Alan Ladd? He's not gay? Uh, well, he's dead now. Uh, he, I don't know. I don't, I don't believe so. I would not be surprised, to be honest. You really hung up on this, uh, Shane being gay thing. I think he is. Look yeah, at him. This might be a little bit of wishful thinking. He's got his hip all tilted. He's secure. Yeah, he's secure with being a gay man. I'm not saying there's you anything be a wrong gay with it. gunslinger in the West. What's the matter with you? I'm not saying I'm not saying nothing bad about it. Kind of turns me on, as a matter of fact. Well, maybe that's the real issue. Cowboys in the '50s westerns, they were a lot fancier. Yeah, he felt fancy. Like his 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 one piece yeah. gun uh, <laughs> leather gun fighters outfit. Yeah, yeah. Like a YMCA. A little frilly. He kind of, yeah. kind of like the frilly yeah. sleeves. I don't know if that's how cowboys or gunfighters really dressed back then. The hat was just tilted a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It was not that there's anything his, wrong with that. I'm, had his hand on his hip all the time. Well, you know, he wanted to be ready to draw at any minute. That was his uh, motor he memory. Was putting out the vibe. He could have been. Yeah. <laughs> How great is Jack Palance? He doesn't say a word, and yeah, he like kind of commands the scene. His fucking face. That is a skull. Right? Yeah, it, it just looks like a skull with skin on it. It's crazy. His cheekbones are like insane. And then the delight on his face when he shoots the southern guy. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that Stonewall Jackson was trash himself. Him, Lee, and all the rest of them ribs. I like how the Confederates were the good guys in this movie. Jack Pounce is the bad guy, and he's like, I was always opposed to slavery. Yeah, exactly. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you You're just pure evil, aren't you? <laughs>
Yeah, he's a he's a classic uh, Western bad guy. The only guy that comes close to him, I think, would be, would be Van Cleef. Mm. The, the, the guy with the weird the guy with the right. little thin mustache and the sharp nose yeah, from the sharp Sergio nose. Leone. Yeah. Maybe eventually too. we'll watch uh, some a Sergio Leone movie. The best would be um, probably uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Yeah. Have I you seen, seen that? No, I haven't. That's a great one. Once Upon a Time in the West is a really great one, too. Yeah, I would like to see more Westerns, see how, how it evolved. Was this at the peak of the Western genre, or was this a little before? Well, they they were making Westerns like as soon as they were making films. The, one of the earliest films was uh, called The Great Train Robbery. That's the one where you, you probably recognize the shot of a cowboy pointing his gun at the camera and firing. Maybe. I'd have to see it. So, yeah, they, they were making Westerns as long as they've been able to make films. And that could be because they were just getting out of that era when film yeah. became a thing. It was probably and it was probably a very popular, you know, subject matter for that point in time. But um, you'll have a problem with those if you don't like slow pacing. Like Sergio Leone, he loves slow pacing. I don't mind it. It's and it, it is there is a charm to it. But I'm just saying I think it's like inefficient and ineffective m much of the time. You could be much more. Well, with Sergio Leone, I suspect he's doing it deliberately because he loves those long shots of scenery and then he likes to cut it in with long shots of a guy's eyes at extreme close-up and I, I just think that that's his style. Well, sometimes it's right. You can sense when they got it right when they get it wrong. Like when they just start cutting the camera to random shit and you can just tell it's like not really pieced together in a poetic way and like they're not actual good cuts like i saw that several points in this movie which is fine but like it you could just see like oh they got kind of lost here they're just like oh we gotta drag this out oh just drag just use that shot and it's like why well why is it there yeah it needs to be there for a reason You're, you need to be communicating something specific and sometimes communicating something sp specific means you're 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 Cutting to seemingly random shit, but it's not really random. Yeah, yeah, that, that could be. I mean, it, they weren't perfect at making movies yet, and I don't know that they're perfect now. That's a sub subjective term also, but... Cinematography has definitely gotten better, but it's, 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 it's easier to do because they went through all the, the trial. All the trials were done back then, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they did all the fucking hard work, and... Not that uh, there's bad cinematography now, but you know. Yeah, um, but this I think this was a, a not a B movie, I and mean, this was a big this was a big deal. The best people at the time were working on this one, yeah. so maybe they just weren't they hadn't figured it out yet. It's very possible, yeah. Um, here, speaking of cinematography, why don't you put your head back in the frame? So this has been uh, Chris and Lyle's man movie, this and has been uh, fun. We'll uh, figure out what the next uh, adventure for us will be, and we'll get back. We'll see you on down the trail. The hell, I have nothing to do. <laughs> I was just hanging out. I mean, I guess they're in the middle of fucking Montana in 1890 or whatever the fuck it is. Well, we'll just sit in this saloon and I'll have an occasional shot of whiskey. That's our job here. Life was tough in the old west. <laughs>